Good evening, everybody. Great news. Peace is not utopia. Peace, I mean in the real world, is not a you know, perfect singular state or condition, obviously. But it has to be daily worked at. Peace is basically the absence of conflict. So, reducing the opportunities of conflict is a realistic way towards peace. There is no universal definition for conflict, uh, but it's a polyhedral interactive contention with many faces, ranging from innocent disagreement up to war. I thought, if I were to understand how conflict works, it would be better to draw them. I started to study conflict with mathematical models. Um, you, you guessed there were mathematical, of course, I guess so. Yes? Clear for everybody? Okay. They represent the um, output of the interaction of hypothetical bilateral conflict. And the first problem is that there is a vast variety of conflict. Each of them with particular mechanism. Moreover, my models, as you can see, became more and more sophisticated. And in the end, I succeeded in finding one better than the others. But this was absolutely useless, because all of the models were just telling the same story, which is, in a conflict, actions call for reactions, at least as powerful as the action, and so on. As a matter of fact, it is self-escalating and potentially never-ending, unless, at least, of course, one quits or uh, disappears. So we had a problem. As a conclusion, conflict generates conflict. So I came to a thought and an issue. The thought first. If conflict generates conflict, why do we sometimes use conflict to try to solve other conflicts? At home or in the world? And then the issue. Knowing better conflicts does not give any solution to reduce the risk. It only proves that once started, a conflict can only naturally grow. So how do we get to the point? I had to change approach. And remember that if there is a conflict, it is because of the existence or the belief of the existence of a threat. If A is in conflict with B, it is because A believes that the context or the behavior of B, of B is a threat. Okay? Right? So, what about threats? Well, evaluating threat first makes you understand if the conflict is worth it. I mean, threats can be positive, and in that case, threats I mean, I mean, conflict would be a nonsense. Think about traffic jam. If there's a traffic jam, you're late, you miss the train, and, of course, you avoid an accident. In that case, traffic jam was good. Or the government with a new tax, and I see everybody smiling about new taxes, that new tax has a heavy impact on a company but at the same time, it wipes out the competitors. So that tax was good for the company. So the question is, how can I understand if the threat is positive? The answer is calculating its effect. So I found out a new model in which, now just listen to me, don't look at the board, thank you. 
And this new model threats and the community of four dimension vectors. But the more important is that the effect of the threat is the inner product of the two vectors. This model has many advantages. It gives a more precise evaluation of threats. It reveals good threats and reduces, therefore, opportunity of conflict. And last but not least, it shows clearly that the effect of the threat are mathematically limited, whereas we usually overestimate them. Mankind generally overestimate threats and, of course, increases the possibility of conflict doing so. One example, I guess anybody in this room perfectly knows who is the most dangerous predator, meaning the most dangerous living thing on Earth. Some guess? Okay, let me give you a little help. It's not a virus. Some more help. It's on this picture. Some more help. No, no, it's not the fish. The fish has nothing to do it. <laughs> I'm going to stop with help. This to show you that talking about threats, we make many mistakes. We don't see some threats and we overestimate some others. So, not considering the other as a threat, such as an enemy, is the key to avoiding conflict. As Pierre de Proche said, the enemy is stupid. He believes that we are the enemy when he is. <laughs> everything is said in that sentence, everything. So the realistic path to peace, is to understand that some threats include opportunities that shouldn't lead to conflict, but should reduce them and build mutual benefits for everybody. Thank you very much.